Right, uh, welcome back. So let's uh, start the next session. Before that, I want to display a bit of the Blackbird. I will paste this on the chat. The attendance should be visible now. You just have to type in Blackbird B capital. All other letters are simple. Okay. Um, let me share my screen again. Right. So next we are going to discuss uh, like how the output that you get when you aggregate the tracker data and visualize them as a pivot table based on whether it has been configured as the output type enrollment or event. Let me repeat myself. So next what we are going to do is like we are going to compare the different of pivot table output. So basically pivot table output is always, uh, is an aggregate output, right? So we are going to compare the pivot table output based on uh, the selection of output type events versus enrollment. So let me try to show this by taking two examples. I'm going to open the output work doses by sex, this one. So what do we see here? So here we are seeing uh, in this output, we are in this output, what we are seeing is uh, we are seeing uh, the org units as rows, and then we have uh, male and female disaggregation as columns, right? And we are seeing the total number of um, events and based on that, a disaggregation as a male and female. Okay, so uh, if we look at the configuration, we will see that the table style is pivot table. That is because we are seeing the aggregate outputs here and the output type is events, not enrollments. Okay, and we are getting a total figure of uh, 32,122 as a total, right? So let me contrast this, I will duplicate. Uh, yeah. Let me open the favorite item, COAC registration by sex. Okay, right. Now, what do we see here? We are trying to get the similar kind of output, but here uh, the output looks same, right? So for example, let me show the previous one. Here we have the org units as uh, rows and the male and female disaggregation um, as the columns, right? Even in this table, we are seeing the org units as the uh, rows and the male and female disaggregation as columns. And again, I think uh, the periods, it's the same this year for the org unit, which is the country level, right? Whereas even here, it's the same um, 
augurate and period dimensions that have been selected. So why do we get different outputs for the same configuration? That is simply because in this, the last one I showed, which is the registrations by sex, here the table style is pivot table, output type is enroll. Whereas in the first one, it's a uh, table style pivot table and output type events. So this is what is causing this different outputs. So let's see what happens. Let me go back to the first example. When we consider the uh, table style as pivot table and output type as event, what actually happens is we are counting all the events, right? So there can be duplication. So for example, if our focus is to see what actually happened with the vaccination campaign, the doses, right? If our focus is mostly about the doses that were dispensed, then this is a kind of a, a valid output. Because like we don't mind like whether uh, same person has been uh, uh, I mean like uh, received two doses as in like it was like we are counting the first dose and second dose both it's not a concern like because we are mainly focusing on the doses but whereas here uh, our concern is mostly about the people the people who have been vaccinated so we don't want uh, uh, the same person to be counted twice but we to get the number of people and probably what we can actually do is other than i mean um, other than factors like uh, we can analyze the age and if we are capturing something else like a uh, uh, economic status we can include the criteria like that also and it will be a more reflective analysis compared to the first one Right, so that's the difference between these two types of outputs. Is that clear? Any questions based on uh, uh, the two types of pivot tables that we discussed here? Because this is something that, uh, that, that is very important to understand, the difference between using enrollments and events. Are there any questions? That's yes. for understanding. Hello. Yeah, you have a question? That's for understanding. Uh, is it if, uh, if I enroll in the program, uh, in enrollment table, I would be shown only one. And if I take in my full two times and I will uh, I will be uh, representing two times in even program is that like uh, let me uh, is that a question Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I couldn't quite get your question. It's not a question, just for my understanding. Hello? Yeah, hello. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a question, just for my understanding. If one person registered in the system, for example, uh, we have analysis by enrollment, then person one will be displayed in, the, uh, in this table. And if this person take uh, full vaccine, for example, he takes two vaccines, uh, then two will be shown in the event uh, reports. Is that like it? Just for my understanding. Okay, sure. Good question. So again, Arif, uh, one thing I must mention is like, uh, 
Okay. So what can actually happen is like entire thing, I mean, about how the analysis is going to appear is based on your configuration. So you can configure this uh, vaccination program in different ways. So for example, you might decide like uh, if this is something like COVID vaccination, if you are using the generic COVAX package that we have in DHIS2, there we are having a repeatable stage, right? For the, for, for, for the vaccination where you have to select first dose and second dose. So, but it's, it's, it, it stays within the same stage. So in that case, if you do an event type of analysis, because we have a repeatable stage to capture the vaccine dose, the same person will be counted twice. But having said that, if you are asking like, is it going to be same every time? Uh, it is not really the same because like, if you configure DHIS2 for a different vaccination program, say like um, there are uh, your, your, your program demands like, and, and the based on the requirements you might feel like, you will be capturing the first and second doses in two different program stages, then it is not so, right? So in that case, the person will only be counted once, even because like you have two different program stages to capture the first and second dose, okay? So that, that's what I want to highlight, like it is depending on your program configuration. If you have kept, configured the program to capture all doses, irrespective of whether it's the first, second, or third in the same repeatable program stage, then if you have event type visualization, person will be counted more than once. But when we are doing enrollment type of analysis, he will be counted only once. Uh, I hope I'm clear. Thank you. Okay, great. Any more questions? Right, if not, Let's try to do the exercise three. Um, I mean, it's a very simple exercise. So let's take about five minutes uh, and then we will uh, move on to the last section of uh, today's presentation, like where we'll be discussing about uh, enrollment across different stages. So if uh, five minutes is not sufficient, I think based on the feedback we received, like uh, most of you still prefer the session to be over early and you can do the exercise later. So that's that's my understanding. But if any of you feel that you need more time to do the exercise while we are doing the live demonstration, please let, let us know in the chat. If not, we will uh, take a five minutes break to do this uh, exercise three and then uh, we will move on to the last one. 